This video describes the VizChem learning design and shows an example of the sequence of activities used to help students imagine what is happening at the molecular level in a chemical reaction. With this new insight, students can explain what they see in the reaction and make sense of the chemical formulas and equation used for describing it. The idea is to motivate students to engage with the new ideas to come. So we start with an engaging phenomenon leading, if possible, to some form of cognitive conflict. The challenge is to explain the phenomenon at the molecular level. The next step is to explicitly bring to the surface prior knowledge and possibly misconceptions about that phenomenon they might have in their long-term memory. Drawing molecular diagrams in a storyboard and discussing this with peers are two ways of doing this. If they are having trouble imagining what is happening at the molecular level, then they're ready to refine their mental model. So we show them the VizChem animation, pointing out the key features that explain the observations. It is then very important to link new insights to what they already know and amend their storyboard accordingly then it is essential to follow up by applying their new model to a new chemical reaction. The VizChem learning design is explained in detail at this URL, but let's have a look at the demonstration of this approach. Let's start with one of the most aesthetically pleasing chemical reactions I know, the one between copper metal and silver nitrate solution. There are three observations to be explained. The formation of beautiful dendritic crystals, the solution turns blue, and the copper metal appears to dissolve. You can see this a little bit clearly with a close up. So, what are the crystals? Why does the solution turn blue? What happens to the copper metal? Where does it go? We need to zoom down to the molecular level in our mind's eye and think about what might be going on. It's important to get the students to express their ideas of the molecular level by drawing diagrams, labeling them, and explaining what is going on using text in a storyboard. We need to help students to develop their storyboarding skills. Here is an example of a storyboard done by a student with a mental model of the molecular world that has been formed solely from looking at chemical equations. For example, you can see here that the student's drawn a copper iron and a silver nitrate molecule, just like the equation appears to be showing. You can see that the student really doesn't have much of an idea of what's going on and is trying to imagine what's going on simply on the basis of the chemical formulas and equation. Having challenged the student's mental model and found it incapable of explaining the observations, the student is ready to learn a better model. Molecular animations are information dense, so it is essential to show all the graphical symbols and what they mean. Preferably, of course, you should use the same symbols consistently throughout the chemistry course, so their molecular level model builds in complexity as you go. I place great emphasis on the equation of ions and encourage students to draw the water molecules appropriately around the ions. The animation of the reaction assumes that the student is familiar with the animations for, say, copper metal, vibrating ions in a delocalized electron cloud, and silver nitrate solution. Lots of water molecules with in this case, equated nitrate ions and silver ions 
occasionally colliding and then moving away again. I refer to animations like these as building block animations that are essential prior knowledge before the complex animation of the reaction between these two comes up next. The version of the animation for this reaction you are about to see is the standalone version and should be able to be understood without me pointing out all that is happening. We use preemptive narration highlighting and repetition for focusing student attention on the key events. This is essential, of course, if they're looking at the animation online. These are the strategies we found in our research with students to be most effective. In a moment, the animation will show vibrating copper ions in a sea of valence electrons. After aqueous silver nitrate is added, one of the hydrated silver ions will approach the lattice. Next, you will see a silver ion gain some of the electron cloud from the copper lattice to form a neutral silver atom. The hydrating water molecules will move away. Next, you will see another silver ion gain one electron's worth of cloud. At another part of the lattice, water molecules will hydrate a copper ion and remove it from the lattice. In effect, a copper ion leaves behind its share of two electrons in the electron cloud. Did you notice the copper ion leave the lattice? Let's play that again. Notice how the silver ion gains an electron and the copper atom loses electrons at the same time but at different parts of the lattice. In a moment you will see a nitrate ion move by. The nitrate ion is a spectator ion. Another silver ion will approach the lattice. This time, notice the competition between the water molecules and copper's electron cloud for the positively charged silver ion. Next, you will see the beginnings of a silver crystal form on the surface of the copper. Notice that silver ions can bond to a growing silver crystal as well as to the copper surface. While all this is happening, copper ions continue to leave the lattice. Did you notice the copper ion leave as a hydrated ion from a different part of the lattice? Let's play that again. Notice once again that copper ions are leaving and silver atoms are forming at the same time. Yet another copper ion will leave the lattice as a hydrated ion. And the process continues. Overall, for every copper ion that leaves two electrons behind, two silver ions gain electrons to form atoms on the lattice. It's important to realise, of course, that the students can 
go backwards and forwards and look at the animation in their own time and that's very important and so we've got to ask students questions that require them to do that. So the next step is to really look at connecting the three thinking levels. What were the observations? The solution turns blue, silver crystals form on the surface, some of the copper gets eaten away. Then we have to go through the molecular events and the symbolic language used to communicate them. So the first bit is the explanation for the formation of the silver crystals, which involves silver ions gaining electrons, described in that way. And then we show a close-up of a silver iron gaining some electron cloud, as we can see there. And the idea is to trap this and just watch that silver iron there just as it gains some electrons some electron cloud, one electron's worth of electron cloud. The next step, of course, is to explain why the copper is being eaten away. It's because the copper atoms are losing electrons and forming copper ions. The copper ions become surrounded by water molecules and copper ions surrounded by water molecules, when there's lots of them, will absorb orange light and therefore the solution appears blue. Okay, so what you've got here is you've got um, uh, you've got solid copper in solution, and aqueous silver nitrate is added to the solution. The water molecules, as you can see here, they actually carry the um, silver ions down, and it comes into contact with the copper. The silver ions actually, um, on, con on, on contact with the copper, the water lets go of the silver ions and they, um, as you can see by the cloud around them, they actually become silver atoms once the water has um, let go of them. You can see this is a useful technique for finding out what students have picked up from an animation. You ask them to do a narration over the top and uh, this particular student did a, an excellent job. But the more common case is that, well, we want students to go back to their storyboard and see if they can amend that storyboard. And uh, in many cases, though, the student um, abandons the storyboard they had before and draws a new one. And uh, the student who before drew a storyboard just based on the equation model um, you can see now it's a much richer storyboard. You can see now there's a much better idea of the copper as being copper ions in a sea of electrons. And the idea that now the reaction is occurring at the surface, showing silver ions coming to the surface. And of course then the formation of silver atoms and you can even see the copper ions becoming hydrated and leaving the surface. So the new storyboard is really quite rich. The last bit though unfortunately isn't right. But that's okay, we can work with that. The final step is to provide opportunities for students to apply their new insights gained from this reaction to another redox reaction, for example the rusting of iron that has some new twists but also occurs at the surface of a metal. Well that's the VizChem Learning Design. Go to the website shown for more detail or contact me by email.